Do you foresee a moment in your lifetime and your kids' uh, lifetime when we're no longer at war as a human species? I believe collaboration is more important than com competition. My science fiction book's going to the moon at the end of the year, and I got Frank White to write the foreword for it, which is the overview effect. And the whole idea is that we're one human family on Spaceship Earth, and we should start viewing it like that. I would love to see personally in my lifetime where we're, in, we're at a time where we don't even have to talk about war as an industry. I think that there will be a time without war, and then that time will come to an end. Like, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not, human history, we've been fighting for way too long for me to sit on this stage and say, yeah, I think we're just, we're gonna get over that. Uh, and, and it's one of those interesting problems where the more, that, let's say you totally get away with it, like, like war stops. The longer you spend away from it, the less that people believe it's possible and the less you do to prevent it. This is the theory of the end of history that existed pre-World War I, then pre-World War II, then before the war in Vietnam, and then before the war on terror. Like, there's the, the, the kind of globalized financial elites every time come to this conclusion where they say, well, we're the most important people in the world, and so sternly worded letters from us and intertanglement between our companies economically mean that large-scale conflict is impossible. I encourage you to go back and read people who wrote about the end of history right after World War I. They said, World War I was so horrible, and now we are so unified, Europe is so unified, that never again is war even possible. It's not even possible to imagine. And then they said, also, all the territorial disputes, they're so settled that nobody's ever going to try to undo the borders. I mean, like, it's, it happens over and over again. And I'm, I refuse to be the guy who's quoted like that 100 years from now where they said, and here's this idiot Palmer who he <laughs> said, I believe that someday war will be over. So, I, I, yes, I think there will be a period where war ends. I think it will go on for a long period of time. I think we can build tools of deterrence that make you know, wars start when one or both sides disagree as to the outcome when they disagree as to who will win and who will lose. When the outcome is relatively known, wars don't start. And so I'm a big believer in either unipolar or maybe, you know, a, you know, bi or multipolar power. But like, if you have a few powers in the world that are relatively at stalemate with each other and your interests don't diverge too much, you can get away with no war for a long time. But who's to say that someone's not going to come up with an asymmetrical advantage, a programmable virus that wipes out all of his enemies, and he decides that he's going to launch an asymmetrical war, and he's going to get a bunch of crazy people on his side? The last thing I'll end with this with is war can come in a lot of forms. You can have nation states, or you can have radical extremist groups. You can have rad radical, violent religious groups. And it would be very hard for me to imagine that never again will there come a group that is willing to die, lose, and consider that victory in pursuit of their extremist goals. How do you deter someone like that? Who's like, oh, I'm gonna lose so hard. I'm gonna <laughs> die and go to heaven so good. It's just, it's, how do, you, how, do you, how do you deter that? It's very difficult. If you enjoyed this episode, I'm gonna be releasing all of the talks, all the keynotes from the Abundance Summit exclusively on exponentialmastery.com. You can get on-demand access there. Go to exponentialmastery.com.